their latest data product. Amanda. Awesome, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, I guess I'll... The fourth button at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my entire screen. Um, I'll minimize this. I'll go into present mode. And can you now see my presentation? Yeah, it's perfect. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for having me um, and for everyone who's you know here this afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, the, one of the benefits of uh, things being virtual, though conferences are more fun when you get to meet uh, people and cross paths. But anyways, um, I'm Amanda Doyle. Um, I'm assistant. I'm, I got. I'm now assistant director of the enterprise data management team, um, and Bayue Kao is uh, the data engineer on the data engineering team. And I'm here to talk to you today about how we developed a new open data product from home during a pandemic. Uh, so this is the story of uh, New York City Planning's housing database. So briefly, who's data engineering? So we're a new-ish team. Uh, we're the newest team in city planning, but now we're coming up on three and a half years um, old. We rethink, we reimagine, and we rebuild uh, DCP's core data products. And then what's most important is we really make sure that what we do is out in the open and it's reproducible. Uh, so all of our code's on GitHub and we use open source technologies. And who are we? Uh, so right now we're a small team of two. There's myself and Bayue. Uh, we are hiring two more people. So if you would like to come work with us, uh, let me know. But we're geographers, statisticians, data analysts, software engineers, and consultants at heart. Uh, and our mission as a team is to create high quality public data sets using highly transparent and, and automated processes um, with open source technologies. Not only that, but it's important for us to build an ecosystem of data. So we want to make sure that we provide all the documentation and metadata to enable users to easily use the data products that we put out. And then lastly, it's important for us to bring people together with data across agencies um, and the public as a whole. So just briefly, um, this is just a quick snapshot of what uh, what a data engineer is versus what a data analyst is. So a data engineer, uh, we are data producers, curators, and providers, whereas we would define a data analyst as a data consumer or a data user. And then how do we make data? So Bayue came up with this analogy that data is like cooking. Uh, so first we you know, go grocery shopping and we ingest the data that we need. Uh, to create data products. So we take data to then make more data. Um, we have to then clean those data. So it's like prepping our ingredients. And then to, we transform the data into a data product that meets a specific business use case, which is the cooking. Um, our secret sauce. So we, a lot of our data products um, incorporate geospatial information. And that's one of our biggest value adds is that we standardize addresses because uh, addresses can appear in a plethora of, of ways. Uh, and we geocode that information so that someone can then go ahead and easily map it. Um, we connect information silos. So uh, data is scattered across uh, different places and we bring it together to, to meet a business use case. And then we put together comprehensive documentation so that it's easy to digest for our end users. So what's in our kitchen? So first of all, um, our bread and butter is Postgres and PostGIS uh, as a geospatial database. Um, our recipe book, as we call it, is GitHub. So all of our code is up there. And those are that's really the instructions on how to build our data products. Uh, and then our most recent addition is GitHub Actions, which is so great, um, where it's automated data pipeline or orchestration. So that's our robo chef. Um, as a small team, it's extremely important for us to uh, automate as much as we can where we can. Uh, so GitHub Actions is a huge, um, huge addition for us. 
So this is a quick overview of our technology stack for our Pluto data set, um, which was one of our core data sets. So we host data in DigitalOcean. We process the data in Postgres. We use GDAL uh, as well. And then if everything looks good, then we publish the data set right into Bytes the Big Apple, which is city planning's open data site. Um, but if it doesn't, because in our QAQC process, which we have a dashboard that's built in Streamlit, we then go back to the beginning. And then we start to look, is something wrong with the input data? Did something um, break in our code? Uh, to then start the deb debugging and uh, process to remedy uh, the issue. So as we know, uh, 2020 was a year. Uh, but still, City Planning's data engineering team published a new open data product. Um, and in 2020, we weren't just a team of two. We did have a third team member, uh, Molly Graber, who was uh, essential in this effort. So what is this new data product that I'm talking about? So it's DCP's housing database, which includes new buildings, demolitions, and alterations that add or remove residential units in New York City since 2010 that have been mapped. So we'll dive into more about what this is and how you can use it. But briefly, this is what it would look like. So if you were to take this data and then, and then map it, um, put it on a map. So the green dots are new buildings, the blue dots are alterations, and the red dots are demolitions. And the size of the dot it represents how many residential units that uh, project is adding or taking away. So how was it built? So we're going to talk through this step by step of like um, how we built this data product and why. So first off, we took the input data sets and our input data sets, our primary input data set is the DOB job applications filings data. This is a data set that's on open data. Um, and just for definition, a job is, uh, is defined as a submitted application for a permit with the New York City Department of Buildings. Um, New York City Department of Buildings has like its own language. Uh, and that's actually one of the driving factors for building this data set was that to create something that's easily consumable um, and you don't need a degree in DOB speak. Uh, we also get other data sets from DOB, uh, the DOB permit issuance data, as well as the certificate of occupancy data. Um, while we like to get things directly from open data where we can, because it reduces our dependencies, sometimes we do have to take data directly from the agencies just because um, the data may not be available in the open um, right now. So for the certificate of occupancy data, uh, DOB does send us that file so that we get the permitted number of units for each certificate of occupancy. Because if you have a big, big building in New York City, um, you may be permitted to have 100 units, for example, that could be occupied while you're still working on the other 400 units. So one of the key things that we do is we normalize and simplify the attributes. So in the DOB job applications data, that includes um, permits for not just things that add or remove residential units, but it includes things like for plumbing work or electrical work. So we select a subset of the input data um, to just uh, new buildings, demolitions, or alterations that would add uh, units to a building. Um, and then we make the values more friendly for the average user. So we're translating codes such as A1 to alteration so that, uh, again, you don't need to speak DOB to you know, start to work with this data. Uh, and again, so again, translating codes. So like we're taking the DOB occupancy codes, which uh, change over time. So the codes that were used in 2010, for example, are not the exact same codes that are being used today, um, but they do map to similar values. So again, uh, we're doing that work for the end user so that they don't have to go and look up a dictionary to understand that uh, a D2 code stands for industrial low hazard. And lastly, we add new fields. Um, and we compute values from the input data. And so 
This is an example of the job status field to you know, say, is this job filed or is it complete or is it permitted, um, which is really important for uh, a end user to understand where is this project in its process? Like, is it, is a, did the applicant, applicant just submit a, um, a request for a um, permit or did they like really start construction or is the job all done? Um, and so instead of, again, going through codes and looking up different dates, we consume uh, information from several fields to then come up with one attribute, which makes it really clear to a user uh, where that project is in the process. And then as, lastly, we join on data from other tables. So uh, we join in the certificate of occupancy data into this as well to give a complete picture of this project. And then as, a, as I was saying, like one of the main value adds that we add for most data products is geocoding. And for the DOB job applications data, there's um, it's not mapped. And so we need to go through and parse um, either the building identification number, the borough block and lot, or you know more valuably the, the address to then get uh, the point and the geometry for that record so that you can map it, which is what most people really do want to do with the data. And as well as we assign other spatial attributes. So we're not only providing a user with the dot on the map, but we're also saying, you know, the this project falls within this neighborhood, this police precinct, this community district, or this zip code. So one of the things that um, is also true about DOB data, not that you you, you, know, you don't just need an a encyclopedia to understand it, but sometimes it can be messy. And so what we do is we systematically correct values where we can, um, where things are inconsistent or just um, really don't line up and we know that they're wrong. Uh, but then we also output records for review. So this is a quick snapshot of a very large um, QAQC, so uh, quality assurance and quality control report flagging characteristics about individual records, which would require them to be reviewed. And we collaborate with our housing and economic um, development team, which is the business owner of this data product um, and are the ones who you know, designed it and you know, said how this data would be useful. Um, we collaborate closely with them. So after we generate an update, uh, we then send it to them and then they conduct uh, an extensive research effort to, you know, go in and correct uh, records where it's saying, oh, this building is building a thousand units. Um, and it's like, actually, that was a typo and maybe it's really only a hundred um, to go in and clean that data. And so, this is again just a snapshot of some of the manual research that they do. So they might be updating a value to an existing existing record, correcting a geometry because uh, some, where that record was mapped um, was incorrect, or they could be removing a record um, because it's it's an invalid record um, for this use for this use case. Um, they also add they. One of the biggest value adds that they do add is they break down the number of units based on the class. And so uh, in New York City, there are multiple classes of residential units. So class A is what you would think of as your typical you know, residential unit. It's like a house or an apartment. You have a kitchen, a bathroom, and a place to sleep. Um, but there's other housing stock in New York City, such as hotels, which we would know. And then there's um, other B. So that could include like single room occupancy or dormitories. So um, you might have your own room, but you're sharing a bathroom or a kitchen. And DOB doesn't break this information out um, in the data that they provide, but through the research of the housing economic and development team, they then break out this information, which is extremely important for planning purposes uh, because a, the impact of a hotel or single room occupancy has a different impact than your typical apartment. So when you put it all together, again, this is what you get. 
um, you can then map it and do analysis on it. And the other thing that we do is not only do we create the points data sets, but we create a unit change summary file. And so what that means is that we report the change in number of residential units by year for a geographic area. And so what we noticed is that a lot of our users are you know, really curious in like, how has the number of residential units changed over time within a given neighborhood? And with these um, summary reports that are already created and they are shape files, um, a user can easily take this information and map it and start to do their analysis. So uh, if you want to dig in more to the housing database, or as we call it internally, the developments database, um, you can get all the code on GitHub uh, here. And then if you want to work with it and download this data and play with it, uh, you can get it off of Bytes the Big Apple. So there are the project level files, which are the points uh, data set that I showed. And then again, there's the unit change summary file, uh, which is you know, polygons and change of units uh, over time by different geographic areas. So what could you do with it? So you're like, Amanda, you just showed me this great data, but like, really, what, what can I do with this? So a couple of things. Um, you can analyze the change in new residential units over time by a geographic area. Um, you can study how the number of residential units may grow in the future. So again, this starts in 2010, but um, it has all permits that are filed as of you know, a certain date. And so that's really a good outlook into what construction will be happening in the future. Uh, furthermore, you could examine characteristics of new buildings, demolitions, and alterations, such as the number of units um, and completion time for them. So where are we going? So not only um, do we build data products, but again, in the spirit of a data ecosystem and a community, we're looking to develop what we're calling an open kitchen. So opening up access to our data through our data library and Google Cloud Platform. Um, where we can you know, easily make data available to planners internally and the public, and also provide computing and visualization source, uh, resources for them. Because what we realize is like uh, what we set out to do from the get-go, which was produce um, open data products using open source technologies. In the last three years, we were demonstrated that we can do that really well. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to close the gaps between uh, data publication, discovery, um, and analyses. And again, we want to build a community with uh, data users like you uh, to share ideas. So if you have questions or ideas, please reach out. And that's it. Thank you. Um, so I'm Amanda. Um, Bayue is my coworker. Um, if you want to learn more about DevDB, there's a link to a blog post, and I can share this uh, deck. And then if you're interested in joining our team, uh, please do apply. Thank you. OK. Um, so I just see a question. So how do you manually, manually clean up the data? What are you specifically looking at? Um, so it's, how do we manually clean the data? So there's a data set that's a corrections file. And the corrections file has the unique um, record, the, sorry, the unique ID for that record, as well as the um, old value that's being corrected and the new value in terms of what it should be. So if like the old value changes, um, then it won't, you know, get corrected. And so that's how we um, technically like make the changes. It's the housing and economic development team that are doing all the research. So they're taking that QAQC report, which was designed with them to say, you know, if a building is 10 stories, but it has a thousand units, it's probably, there's probably something wrong with it. So please output that and like flag it as having an error where there are probably too many units. Um, and so they use that spreadsheet as a guide to say, um, you know, these are the records that meet certain criteria that they then need to kind of focus their research on 
Um, and they do their research in a variety of ways, um, all, you know, using GOB data, uh, using uh, other resources that they have to then say, this is how the data needs to be corrected. Does the data have any policy implications for city planning? Um, a little bit, yeah. So it's really important for the Department of City Planning to know um, where new housing is being built. And that cer is certainly one of the agency's missions is to provide quality and, af and affordable housing for all New Yorkers. And the way that city planning um, influences the city is through zoning. Uh, so we will say, you know, in this area, um, you can build X, Y, or Z. Um, and that's how this, how, that's how we shape the city. So knowing, um, you know, how zoning might be influencing development is important. Um, knowing where development is happening um, will then certainly say, uh, how do we influence the development happening there? How do we foster development um, and so forth? Um, how do we connect GitHub actions to our data processing steps? So um, I can, I'm happy to kind of share that piece of code. So um, you, you, I'm kind of blanking on, on how to like explain this, but um, you can configure a GitHub action to be triggered. Um, so for example, if we make a, if we open an issue that says build DevDB, it'll trigger a GitHub action. And in that action, we're telling it to orchestrate um, several um, shell scripts. And those shell scripts are then triggering a series of Python and SQL scripts, as well as spinning up a database and, and getting everything set up um, that you would need uh, to build ZDB. Why Google Cloud Platform for sharing your output instead of other cloud providers? Uh, so Google Cloud Platform, uh, we found to be the most robust and the cheapest. But if you have any ideas um, for other things that we should look at, uh, we're definitely open for feedback. But it's a really good suite where you, oh, hey, by the way. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to say I can answer some of the questions as well. Um, cool. I'm glad you're here. I didn't see you. So, by the way, do you want to chime in on why yeah. Google Cloud Platform? Yeah. Uh, also, just to get back on how you connect GitHub Actions to the data processing step. So, we adopted GitHub Action because during COVID, we had a budget cut. We had to um, cut our cloud um, budget uh, to one third of what it was. So uh, we were looking forward to have some kind of serverless uh, platform that would do the data processing for us. So, so as of now, we if you look at the GitHub Action script in our repositories, we're actually running a Dockerized Postgres instance uh, every time we commit to GitHub. And it would spin up a, um, a Postgres database within GitHub Action server, and we do the whole uh, data ETL uh, there. And once the data is uh, complete um, and finished processing, we would store the data in a digital ocean um, S3 bucket. Uh, so throughout the entire whole process, we don't have to create any servers, and we are using publicly available computing resources. So, so this is one of the cost-saving measures, which also happened to make our development process much easier as well. And uh, we are picking Google Cloud Platform because we really like the idea of not having to maintain any servers. Uh, so we we love BigQuery. It's very convenient to use. Uh, it's serverless. It provides um, access to uh, pretty much anyone who would like to access the data within the agency. And, um, and we also heavily use the Google Cloud Shell as our within the cloud IDE. Um, and previously, we actually deployed our own cloud IDEs. But uh, over time, it became too much headache to maintain. And uh, it was also very costly. So Google Cloud Platform provides, uh, it's like a Swiss army knife of uh, cloud. You can get something of uh, everything. Um, so it, it's like the one place for uh, that will satisfy a lot of our needs. Um,
Uh, and Amanda, can you answer the process of creating this data led to any changes to the workflow or data input process for the jobs permit data in order to improve accuracy in the future? Uh, no, so I can, I can take the next two questions. Um, so just about the, has DevDB and the process of creating it resulted in any improvements to the input data? Um, no. Uh, so the, you know, what we're conscious of is that there's a business case for, you know, all the data that we consume. Um, so DOB is really interested um, at building level data, uh, and that's really how they operate and function. Uh, so if we find something wrong, um, or we're processing it and looking at it in a different way, it doesn't really impact them. Um, and we've seen this kind of with, uh, with our other data products. Uh, and then are there cons privacy concerns with sharing residential data? Um, no. So what we're just showing is uh, where construction is happening throughout New York City. So are, is someone putting a new building up, uh, tearing a new building down, or uh, altering a building in such a way that would add uh, or remove residential units? Uh, and all this data is public anyways um, through the DOB job applications data. Um, and I guess the last question is, you know, are we using open source for mapping and analysis? Um, so as you know, our team, we have traditionally focused on building data product and not doing the analysis, but if we are playing with the data, exploring it, doing QAQC, uh, we are using open source tools, um, such as QGIS. So those are all the questions I see. So if there are no more questions, thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Um, I can make sure that the deck that I presented um, gets circulated. Uh, and again, if you have any questions um, or just one shot data. Uh, uh, yes, we. Um, so our former colleague Chris Wong was actually uh, he's in Query now, and we keep in very close contact with him. And uh, we've been collaborating to develop some develop and test some of the new uh, features for Query. So, so that's definitely a very good suggestion. Thank you for uh, raising that up. Great. Thank you. I think that's it. Thank you for your presentation. It was so good. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. And everybody else, thank you for your attention. Sorry for the mess up with the previous presentation. Have a good evening. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you.